I wish I could do that. I always respond the same way. I always say, you can, if you just practice. And invariably, I get some version of this response. Oh, no, I can't. I'm just not musically talented at all. It breaks my heart. It breaks my heart because it shows that their world is one where musical talent is something you either have or you don't, and there's nothing you can do about it. And if that's true of musical talent, why shouldn't it be true of other things? I'm shy, a person might say. I'm just socially awkward. I'm bad at math. These people have what some call a fixed mindset. The belief that talent is innate. That you're good at some things, bad at others, and that's just the way you're made. And it breaks my heart because not only is a fixed mindset just a completely inaccurate way to view the world, it's also stifling. It puts limits on what you achieve and what experiences you're likely to have throughout your life. There's another way to view the world. Believing that talent and skill is not a fixed quantity at all, but something malleable, something that responds to the effort you put in. It's called a growth mindset. All of us here at Toastmasters have a growth mindset to some degree. We wouldn't come here week after week and give very terrifying speeches <laughs> that we didn't think was going to make us better at it. But you can apply the same thinking to any skill, any aspect of your life, and watch as the limits you place on your beliefs about who you are and what you can or can't do just melt away. For example, in one middle school, the lowest performing students in math and many of the other subjects, but specifically math, were asked to attend a series of remedial classes after school. Told to. They wouldn't have done it on their own. Some of those students were given the kind of information you might expect for students that were doing poorly in math. Extra math instruction, study skills, organization tips. But the other group of remedial students was given an unorthodox series of lessons. They were given lessons on how the brain is like a muscle that gets stronger the more you use it. They were asked to remember how terrible they were the first time they played a video game or shot a basketball, things that the students now excelled at, and reminded them that they were only able to bridge that gap by practice, and that math, and indeed all of their other subjects, were the same way, that you could improve via practice. So what happened? In the first group, students stagnated. Grades at the end of the semester were no different from when the remedial sessions began. But in the experimental group, students skyrocketed. Their scores went up on average a full letter grade. And by the end of the semester, some of those students had Bs in math. At the end of one session, after a student had been told that being good at school was a skill that you could learn, just like basketball or video games. The student looked up at his teacher, tears in his eyes, and said, you mean I don't have to be dumb? <laughs> <laughs> and indeed, these were the students that many would call the dumbest in the school, that many might have referred to as hopeless. And it's clear that at least some of the students felt that way about themselves. But it didn't matter anymore. The students were able to do as well or better than their peers when they learned that they could learn, when they changed their mindset. And that's the tragedy of the fixed mindset, is it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you think that practice can't improve you, if you think you can't get better, you don't try. And if you don't try, of course you don't get better, because only by trying can you improve. If you have a fixed mindset, you shy away from new activities. You don't want to find out you're bad at something, because then you'll know you're bad at it forever. If you fail once, you'll think, that means I'm not good at it. But if you have a growth mindset, you know that failure is not a judgment on your worth as a human being. It's a necessary step on the path to mastering a new skill. When you have a growth mindset, you're more likely to take on challenging tasks. You're more persistent in the face of setbacks. And ultimately, people with a growth mindset achieve more throughout their lives because they're always pushing themselves to improve. So if you're accustomed to thinking of yourself as socially awkward, or bad at math, or musically untalented, how do you develop a growth mindset? Same way as any other skill. 
Practice. And here's one way to do it. Think of a skill that you've always admired. Maybe something you've always wanted to learn to do, or something you thought you were too untalented to do. And find a way to do it. Find a teacher, take a class, join a club, shoot some basketball, write the song, play the piano. Don't practice presenteeism about it. Really try to do it. And expect yourself to be terrible at first. When a five-year-old learns to play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star on the piano, we are astounded. We think it's amazing. We applaud that child. When an adult learns to do the same thing, we're not impressed. <laughs> but why shouldn't we? Here are two people who have both spent the same amount of time learning a very specific skill. They both have the same amount of practice and they both have the same potential for greatness. We shouldn't expect more from a first-time instrument learner, whether they're 5 or 25 or 55. So give yourself permission to be five years old. Try something new. Do it terribly. Do it proudly. Throw yourself into it with the joy and enthusiasm of a five-year-old. And by the time you're a seven-year-old, you'll be two years more amazing at something you never thought you could do at all. Mm -hmm. Mr. Toastmaster. Wow.